What's going on guys, Real Touch GML here back with our second installment in the Java Let's Build a Zombie Game series. And in this episode, what we're gonna do is set up object-oriented programming. So first off, the best way I can describe object-oriented programming is that we can take everything we want in our game, let's say our zombies, let's say our player, let's say basic blocks that we can collide with, even our bullets, even maybe plants and scenery in the game. Anything that's interactable in our game uh, is going to be put into what's called a game object. Now a game object is the parent class for every other object in your game. So now what we can do is we can access our game object and through there render everything, tick everything, uh, just make everything run exactly how we want it to, but they're all in individual uh, objects themselves. So as a quick example, if this is our game room here, let's say we have our player, Let's say we have a zombie. Let's say we have a bullet, right? So basically, this is an object, this is an object, and this is an object, and they're all basically the same object. The only difference between them is that they have a different class so we can uh, create their logic, so how they perform in the game and how they look in the game. The other difference is their ID. So we're gonna create what's called an enumeration, which IDs each object as its own. So this ID right here could be a zombie, this ID could be bullet, and this ID could be player. So since every object in our game is a game object, we need the, uh, the program to differentiate what object is what, and that's where the IDs come in, all right? So we're gonna be creating three new classes in this episode. We have our handler class, our game object class, and our ID enumeration, which is going to be another class, but it's, it's an enumeration. So let's start with our handler. Basically what happens is that this handler is in charge of rendering and updating every game object we put in the game. Okay. So it could have, you know, a thousand different game objects and it's going to, what we're going to do is we're going to put every game object into a linked list and through that linked list, we can uh, use a basic for loop to loop through all of the game objects in the game and render them separately and update them separately or tick them separately. Okay. Our game object is going to be the parent class for all of our other classes in the game. So our game object is going to parent our player class our zombie class, our block class, our bullet class, um, anything we want in the game. Okay, so this game object is going to parent it. And then our, our ID enumeration is, like I said before, going to basically ID what game object is what. So if we have a game object player and we have a game object zombie, how does the, how does the game know the difference between player and zombie because they're both game objects, right? So that's where IDs come into play so that we can link an ID to the player, we can link an ID to the zombie, the bullet, the block, and again, anything we want in the game. So these are the three main things we're gonna be creating in this episode. So here we are in Java, and the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new enum or enumeration. And I'm gonna name this ID in uppercase, all right? And so basically what we can do in this enumeration here, it's a little bit different from a class, is we can just put down different IDs that we can use. So we'll say player, uh, we'll say zombie, we'll say block, and we'll say bullet just to start. All right? So all these here are now different IDs that we can use. And that will make more sense later after we've actually created everything we need to create object-oriented programming. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a new class, and this is going to be our game object class. All right, and this is going to be an abstract class. And the reason it's an abstract class is because, again, this is going to be the parent class for all of our other objects. So when we're creating our game object class, what we want to figure out is what is each game object going to have in common? Right? So each game object might have an X and a Y value. Each game object needs an ID that we just created. 
each game object needs like a velocity X and a velocity Y to uh, pretty much just make it so that they can um, they can go at a certain speed in the velocity in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction. So we can make all of this stuff in here. So I'm gonna create a couple new variables and this is gonna be a protected float X and Y. And the reason we're using protected is because the difference between public and private is that public can be called from any other class in our game. Private can only be called in this class. Protected can be called in this class or any of our child classes. So if you're getting confused with the parent and child aspect of it, basically what we can do, and I'll just go ahead and create a new class here and call it test, is once we create that game object, we can extend our game object and now it takes in all of the different, all of the information, all of the variables that we set up in here, we can now access in here. So just with that, we can, um, we can create the constructor and call X now equals 100, right? And now you can see that it's not showing us an error that it can't find X because it extends our game object and we've already created that X variable inside there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this test. So I'm gonna create a couple more variables and I want to create our velocity X and our velocity Y. And I want to create our ID. So protected ID. I'm just going to say ID. Okay. So now what we can do is in our constructor, public game object, we can add in these different variables. So float X, oops, float X, float Y, and ID, ID. And now in here we can just say this.x equals X this dot y equals y and this dot id equals id all right so now in our game object class we want to create specific methods or functions that each object has as well so just like in our game class here we have our tick method which just updates everything in the game and we have our render method that renders everything in the game now what we want to do is we want to have specific classes that update and render specific objects. So we're going to put this in the game object class, right? So public abstract void tick. And that's all we're going to do because we don't want to put any actual logic into our game object. We just want to make it so that every game object has these methods. So we can say public abstract void render. And we're going to add in graphics G. And if you remember, our graphics G is what we set up here. Our graphics G is how we use everything to um, draw or render or do anything in the game. So this is a basic game object class. Now what we want to do is generate getters and setters. So if we go up and if this is if you're using Eclipse Juno, you can do this. If you're using NetBeans, it might be a little bit different. Or, or you could just write it out yourself. So we're going to create getters and setters and basically getters and setters. What they do is we can access the game object and call a certain method to return a certain value like the X or the Y positioning. So I'm going to go up to source, uh, generate getters and setters, and I'm just going to tick all of these here. And as you can see, it created all of the different methods that we need to return all of our values or our variables that we created. So we can return our ID, we can set our ID, we can do anything we want. All right, so this is a basic game object class that's going to parent all of our other classes. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to create the handler class. So I'm gonna create a new class, handler. And again, this, uh, this class right here is just in charge of updating and rendering every single thing, every single game object in our game. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a public linked list and it's gonna be game object and I'm just gonna call it object and it's gonna equal a new linked list game object. Control shift O to import linked list. And so now in this class, we can create two separate methods, public void tick and public void render graphics G. Control shift O to import graphics. And before we dive into what we're going to do in the tick and render method, let me show you how it's actually all going to come full circle. So I'm going to go into my game class here and I want to create a new instance of our handler. So over here, I'm just going to comment instances 
and we are going to create a private handler called handler. And in our game constructor, I want to just set handler to equal new handler because we want to initialize it. So if we run the game now, we have no errors. We're still good. And what we're going to do is in our tick method, we're just going to say handler dot tick. And in our graphics or our render uh, uh, method, we're going to say handler dot render G. This is very important that handler is below this because code runs from top to bottom. So this is basically our depth uh, that we're going to be creating. So this is going to be below all of our objects in the game and uh, which is what we want because that's the background. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into our handler and now we can run through a basic for loop to go through all of the objects in our list and update them and render them separately. So I'm going to create four and it's going to be game object and I'm going to name it temp object and we want to use the list object. Okay. So what this right here, what this basic for loop is going to do is it's going to loop through every single game object in our game. Okay. And you might be wondering, how do we add objects to our list? How do we remove objects to our list? We're going to get to that, but let's just start here. So what I can say is temp object dot tick. And just like that, now it's updating every single object in our game. So we can do the same thing with our render for game object, temp object. We're using our list object that we created up there. We can say temp object dot render G. So now how do we add or remove objects to our list? So we're going to create two new methods and this is going to be public void add object. And this is going to take in the parameter game object and we'll just name it um, object or just to make it easier. We'll just say temp object. And here what we can say is object dot add temp object. Okay. And temp is temporary. That's what it stands for. So what this is doing is we're, calling object, which is the, uh, the linked list that we created. And that linked list has a built-in method called add that we can add in any object we want. So public void remove object, because we want to be able to remove objects from our list. Temp object, uh, object dot remove, and it's going to be temp object. Okay, so a very basic method that just again runs through everything, renders everything, and also gives us the ability to add and remove objects. We have everything set up so that we can render and tick our handler. So now all we have to do is add in an actual object to create. We're going to add in a new object or a new class, only in a player. And this player is going to extend our game object. And as you can see, we're getting a weird error here. And that's because now we need to add implemented methods in our game object. So if you hover over it and add our constructor, it'll add it for us. And then we need to hover over it again and add our unimplemented methods, which is our tick method and our render method. So as you can see, it's taking everything that we created in our parent class and automatically putting it into our player game object class. So if we just create something very simple like g.setColor, color dot um, black, we'll say, and we can say g dot fill rect at our x, y, and we can do width 32 and height 32. And as you can see, we're getting an error here. And that's because this g dot fill rect, actually, if you look below, it takes in integer values. And in our game object, we're taking in float values. Uh, so to do this, what we have to do is cast what's called casting uh, our float into an integer. So what we can do is just in parentheses here, just do int and int. So it's that easy to do. So now when it runs this method, it'll call it as an int. Why are we creating float variables inside of our game object then? And that's because when we get further into the series, when we start creating the, um, the movement system for our player, we're going to be using acceleration and deceleration values that allow for a super, super smooth uh, movement with our player rather than a very boxy um, movement system with our WASD keys. It looks super nice and what you're seeing on the screen now is an exaggerated 
Uh, not something that we would really want in a game, but it's an exaggerated feel on our acceleration and deceleration values, okay? So now we technically have a game object in our, in our game. So now we can add this very easily if we go to the game class here. And remember, code runs from top to bottom. So anytime we're using this handler, we want to make sure that we're, we're, uh, we've, initial, we've initialized the handler and then we can start using the handler. So we always want to initialize it first, right? So it would be even probably better if we created a private void uh, init class or method. And we just call this init here. And we can put everything below there. And then everything below this. So everything below here, we can now use our handler class. So I'm going to say handler dot add object new player. And here it takes in the values that we want. So we can say maybe 100 X 100 Y and our ID is ID dot player. So let's run the game. As you can see, we now have a black box in our game. How cool is that? So this is an actual game object. And if we go ahead and just copy this line of code, paste it down and maybe you want to put it at 200. We now have two objects in our game. So these are both player objects in our game that are being uh, ran uh, through the rendering method and update method through our handler class. So we can have as many of these as we want on the screen. Okay, so now we can just create something pretty cool. So maybe if I create a couple more of these, maybe a three and 400, copy this. Maybe we'll do it here. So two, three, four, we'll add these at one. And we now create it again. So now we have like a cool little system here. And now what we can do is use our velocity x and our velocity y variables to make them move. So I can say in our tick method in our player class, x plus equals velocity x and y plus equals velocity y. This just basically means that we can now use the velocity x and the velocity y to move our object. So in here we could say maybe velocity x equals one and velocity y equals one. So now if we run the game, as you can see now they're all moving down to the right. We can also control the logic in each different class. So in our tick method, this is all just local to our player class, not our actual game object class. So we can say if x is greater than game dot width, we'll say, which is the width of our screen, x equals zero. And if we set maybe velocity x to five, now they just repeat and we get a constant loop of objects. So this is the very basics in our object-oriented programming, but it's definitely something that we need to create uh, in order to move forward. So if you have any questions about this episode, go, go ahead and leave a comment below and uh, leave a like, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.